Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to today's presentation from GNET Group entitled Digital Marketing Dashboard Framework. Without further delay, I'm pleased to hand the floor over to your presenter, Anand Pandya from GNET Group. Take it away. Thank you, Marcy. Um, again, my name is Anand Pandya. I'm the BI Services Manager in, at, in our South Central District here at GNET Group. Um, you can see my contact information here on screen if you have anything. Uh, questions throughout the uh, presentation, feel free to use the live meeting Q&A panel, or you can shoot me an email as well as follow us along on Twitter and shoot any messages that way as well. Um, brief outline of what we'll be covering today. I want to give a quick introduction to GNET Group, who we are, what we do, give a quick overview of some of the objectives, uh, objectives that we will be covering in talking about the digital marketing dashboard framework, mainly really talking about today's modern digital era and some of the challenges that it presents from a data collection, aggregation, and consumption perspective. We're going to get a, lin get a little bit into our digital marketing dashboard framework solution. I want to go into a real-life implementation that we did at Polaris Industries, show you a quick demo of the solution, and then really open the floor to Q&A. So uh, a little bit about GNN Group. GNN Group is a managed gold-certified Microsoft partner and focused on empowering data-driven strategies. Uh, really, the way we see it, data is the lifeblood of any company that's in operation today. And if you can't really make sense of the data that your business processes and your systems create, then it makes life a little bit harder to operate. Um, there are a history of about 150 successful Microsoft BI and Microsoft SharePoint projects across multiple verticals. We've helped several different companies turn their data from just kind of mere bits, bytes, zeros, and ones to actionable information and insight. GNAC Group has been leveraged by Microsoft's Global Center of Excellence, and it's, we're recognized as a thought leader and a leading provider for Microsoft BI and SharePoint solutions. We're headquartered in St. Paul, Minnesota, and we have local offices in Dallas, Fort Worth. Quick uh, logo slide just to lay out some of the different customers we've shown, as we mentioned, across different industries. We've had several different projects. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to highlight the work we've done at Polaris with the digital marketing dashboard framework. Our core range of services really stretches across business intelligence and SharePoint. Uh, all of our projects begin at a strategic level where we help our customers envision how they can better monitor and achieve the goals and objectives that they've set. We help establish data and content governance to make sure things get started on the right foot, like ensure customer solutions are used to the fullest rather than just kind of being built and proverbially collecting dust on the shelf. We offer three pre-built accelerator solution sets that work as a um, customizable core to fit your business in a uh, accelerated sense. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the digital marketing dashboard framework today, so I'm going to gloss over that one in this um, slide. Uh, second piece would be our planning and budgeting and forecasting uh, solution. That is a full-blown end-to-end planning and budgeting application that's been built across SharePoint, uh, Microsoft Office, and Microsoft SQL Server. We have a published case study on Microsoft's website that we've done for the Wilder Foundation in Minnesota. And that's currently available. Uh, you can shoot us an email if you have any questions about that. And the third solution set we have is our healthcare intelligence framework that helps healthcare providers really balance quality and cost of care by providing Six Sigma analytics to gauge change and predictive analytics to really get a better feel for resource optimization. I want to take a little bit of break here, get a feel for who's in our audience. So if you could just take the time and and click and let us know what kind of role you play in your organization. Are you an IT professional, a marketing professional, finance professional, an executive or decision maker, or do you play a different role? I'll give you a little bit of time. All right, looks like we have a pretty good mix of IT and marketing. So that's great. So we talked about uh, the digital marketing dashboard framework and what we really want to accomplish in today's webcast. And the objectives we're really dealing with are the mountains of marketing data that marketing departments have to sift through to really get a feel for how effective campaigns are going. Um, almost 10 out of 10 times we're dealing with external data sources and external silos of marketing activities that are really causing a lot of fragments uh, of data 
different systems and trying to integrate those things. And it's very hard for marketing departments to merge all this information and consolidate all this information to really get conclusive insights that let them get a better idea of how to put their marketing dollars to better use. So things like channel optimization and consumer engagement, the effectiveness of the campaigns that you, your organization is running, and ultimately how does that relate to conversion and pipeline? How are we making money? How are we getting more customers? How are we getting more people in? We're also going to touch on the capabilities of the Microsoft's 2010 Business Intelligence Stack. So that would be the SQL Server 2008 R2 backside with uh, ETL by integration services, storage, and the SQL Server database engine, um, OLAP engines and cubes in analysis services, presented through SharePoint dashboards, self-service visual analytics, the capability to integrate geospatial data and mapping, and a tool called Pivot Viewer for really image-based correlative analysis. So the digital era. Think about your daily routine. Um, when you wake up in the morning, do you just kind of get up and start going, or is the first thing you do kind of roll over, grab your cell phone, check the news, check emails, you know, as you're going throughout the day? Um, are you checking websites? Are you checking little ads that are popping up on phone apps that you're using? Are you first thing when you get to work, when you open your computer, are you sifting through more emails? Are you going to CNN.com or Wall Street Journal, going to read articles, and you see all the Internet ads going on? And how do you evaluate those products and services via channels? You know, how do you ultimately use that um, those digital channels to influence the decisions that you make when it comes to purchases and buy? So, you know, from this end, there's Facebook, there's your laptop, there's mobile phones, there's, you know, iPads and Slates, Twitter, uh, text messaging, all these different things that now impact how we consume information. Now think about it from the organization side. As an organization, I can send emails, I can position different banners on websites, social media, paid search. All these things are driving traffic to my website. This is really all the spend that I have as a marketing department. I'm spending trying to get to those channels that people are interacting with on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute basis. How do I gauge where those people are coming from? What are they buying? And ultimately, how is it turning into the returns and dollars that are coming into my organization? How do I make sense of all this today? You know, how many experiences does it take to convert? You know, we're talking about the more traditional sense. It was a very straight-line approach. It was a defined path. There were linear stages. It was a direct conversation. It was phone calls. It was trade shows. It was, I have a booth. I have a person-to-person -person interaction. I know when I'm talking to these people. I know what the stages are and that path for conversion. I know when I make the influence. I know those handshakes. I know those conversations. I can feel those things out. In a traditional sense, it's very textbook. But when we get into the digital age, the game changes. Now you're talking about multiple channels, talking about multiple paths to conversion. You're talking about the human element, the behavioral elements of marketing. And it's the attribution model. So it's the idea that no two visitors are alike. So I can see one ad, click on it, go to your site, and not see anything I really like and just leave. Another person might not actually click to your website until they've seen 15 ads, gotten an email, maybe saw a viral video on YouTube, and then finally that person gets to your website and they convert and make a purchase. There's no way to gauge what's the influence, what's the conversion. And if you try and focus in on a single channel, ultimately in the digital age it becomes myopic, becomes misleading. You can't make a single funnel that represents your entire digital marketing channel and endeavor because there's so many different channels and there's so many different ways to look at it. Combining that data together is really the only way to get a complete online marketing picture. So before we get into that, I want to take a quick step back and ask you, the audience, what kind of digital marketing your organization is using. From an on-site analytics perspective, you use Web Trends, Google Analytics, Omniture, uh, your IIS logs, 
on your web server? Do you use email marketing to reach out to customers? So things like exact target, constant contact, or yes mail. Do you use bought media? So do you use Microsoft Atlas? Do you use DoubleClick? Or all of the above slash some of the above. So a lot of you might be using a mix of these. So if you use more than one of these, go ahead and select all of the above. Um, that really, you know, all of the above comes some of the above. You know, what you're using to really gauge how do I reach customers. I want to give you a moment for that. Okay. Seems like a majority of you either use a mix of these things or if there is a focus, it's on on-site analytics. So that's great. So if we're taking a look at how people measure effectiveness today, we talked about how you've got all these different external pieces that come to play. So you've got your web analytics, you've got online ads, you've got email marketing, you've got all these different digital channels that are being used, and they all have their own separate data centers, and they may produce reports for you, and they may produce data extracts, but they're all single-channel pieces. Ultimately, they're getting exported to Excel. And when you want to see them mixed with your internal systems to really gauge that conversion, gauge that pipeline and funnel, you can't just run a single report. You have to export data from your CRM, from your ERP, from your online sales system, from other internal systems. So ultimately, when you're trying to ask questions, you get this mixture and mash of spreadsheets going back and forth between the analysts, between the managers, as questions are being asked for analysis to be done. It's choppy. It's broken. It's very manual effort. And then when questions start being asked, how are we performing against targets? So my analyst team has provided all these reports for me, and I start asking questions. If those answers aren't readily apparent, I have to go right back to that Excel process to return more reports. What does our pipeline and funnel look like? Well, which channel are we talking about? Are we talking about a traditional channel? Because those are easy to report. Are we talking about a digital channel? Well, each one of those channels can be different. They can be fat pyramids, thin pyramids, inverted pyramids. How does it work? What's the correlation in activity with revenue? So across all these channels, when people are getting to our website, how does that ultimately turn into conversions? That's great that we have this fantastic website, but is anybody doing anything on it? So as I'm asking all these different questions, what's the trend? What's it been like? What campaigns are working? What channels are working? What's driving revenue? Ultimately, I'm driving towards a single question of how effective is our marketing campaigns or are our marketing campaigns. And right now, it's very hard for organizations to try and consolidate all these different silos of Excel data and produce those analytics quickly enough to answer that question. It does me no good to know how a campaign did well after the fact. I need to be aggressive. I need to be agile enough to make the right changes to invest my marketing dollars the right way.